Welcome back to Honey of Knowledge and in this lecture of econometrics we will be introducing the matrix algebra aspect of it or rather the more versatile way to analyze econometric data and this is what we will be following for the rest of the lectures in econometrics. So before we begin let's just recall what we were doing so far y is equal to a plus bx plus e. Over here we just had one predictor which is x. We also had a liberty of introducing more predictors by using cz and so on. But when we add more predictors, what you have to do is you have to estimate more parameters and it's not scalable. So you have to estimate a and b in this case. Once you add another predictor, you have to estimate a, b and c if you have a cz. And if you have another predictor, let's say some pw so you have to estimate p also so you have to keep on estimating the coefficient of the parameters and all the calculation will be separate for all of them so it's not really scalable let's say for a model if i have thousand predictors which is not that unnatural it happens so you cannot scale that calculation process of course you can say that there are computers to do that but there are smarter ways to perform that same task so let's look at what's that way and that way is the way of linear algebra or matrix algebra. So let's proceed to that. We have a change of notations here. You have T observations and K minus 1 predictors. That is why I have written K minus 1 terms. So it goes from beta 2 to beta K. That is why from 2 to K, so K minus 1 predictors. If you recall y is equal to a plus bx, a had no predictors. Similarly, beta 1 has no predictors. You can also think of it alternatively as beta 1 having 1 as the coefficient. Now that would be easier in the further analysis as we see. So to sum it up, we have a different set of notations. You have t observations, that's why y1 to yt and you have k minus 1 predictors and 1 intercept term. So beta 1 here is the intercept term and you have beta 2 to beta k, I mean beta 2, beta 3 and so on till beta k as the coefficient for predictors. And the number of predictors here we have is t minus 1 and e is your error term. It has t values because we have t values of y. You can denote these values as x1. Now this x1 will be a vector. Similarly, you can denote these values as x2 and so on. This goes on till xk. But remember, x1 is a vector of all ones and x2 is a vector which has x1 to x2 to x3 to and so on. So basically, this is the values of the first predictor and xk would be the values of the last predictor or k minus 1th predictor. So let's write the matrix form of this. If you can recall matrix multiplication, if I write a into b, if this guy over here is your a and this guy over here is your b, what you do is you take rows and columns. So you take all the values here and multiply this with the corresponding values from here. So this into this plus this into this plus this into this and so on. And you write that in the first cell and so on. So we will be using this matrix multiplication formula. If you are not familiar with matrix multiplication, I would suggest you to look up a matrix multiplication tutorial or rather I will make one if you need that. So comment below if you need a matrix multiplication or an intro to matrix algebra kind of a video. So I'll make that in future. But now we will proceed to the analysis part of it. So let's look at this multiplication. So how we will multiply these two matrices is in this way. You take this row first and this single column which you have. Now there is a requirement for this matrix multiplication to be possible. If you look at the dimension of this matrix, this is T cross K 
and the dimension for this is k cross 1 and as this k over here is the same k over here you can multiply these two matrices and the resulting matrix will be having a dimension of t cross 1 now which is the dimension of y which we will be having if you recall y is going to be y1 y2 and so on till yt so dimension over here is t cross 1 if you multiply these two matrices you will also get a matrix of dimension t cross 1 which is kind of predictable so if you get this row and this column x11 into b1 x21 into b2 and so on in the last we will have xk1 into bk now if you recall these x11 x12 x1, x1t values are just 1 1 1 1 1 so what you will get after multiplication this in the first row is 1 into b1 plus x21 b2 plus dot 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 xk1 bk so this will be the multiplication which uh, will be giving you x into beta now this matrix is known as the design matrix or represented by capital x and this matrix is known as the coefficient matrix or it is represented by beta so you can also say that y is equal to x beta plus e so i will rewrite this in a more digestible manner so over here you have a summarization of what we have done so far y is equal to capital x beta plus e is what is the new magical equation of econometrics which we will be dealing from now on so from now on y is equal to a plus bx changes to y is equal to x beta plus e or you can also expand this x beta to write y is equal to x1 beta 1 plus x2 beta 2 and so on till xk beta k where k minus 1 is the number of predictors because x1 will be 1 for you or you can write this in the complete matrix form this over here is not the complete matrix form but this is the complete matrix form y1 to yt so you have t observations and this over here is the first column which is all full of 1 the second column will be your first predictor third column will be your second predictor and so on and kth column will be your k minus 1th predictor or the last predictor and multiplied this design matrix or capital X with beta this beta is over here now beta is your vector as y was your vector having dimension t cross 1 or y vector so this is beta vector having dimension k cross 1 and beta 1 is your intercept term beta 2 will be the coefficient for first predictor and so on and beta k will be the coefficient for the k minus 1th predictor or xk and this is simply your error vector which goes from e1 till et because you have ty values as if you multiply these two matrices you will have a t cross 1 dimension of a matrix as this is t cross 1 and this error is also t cross 1 matrix so you can look at it from this way this way or this way everything is fine you just need to understand that we are moving to this regime in the next lecture we will be moving on to finding the estimation for beta how do we get the value of beta as we have done it for b when we had y is equal to a plus bx plus e we estimated b and we also estimated a here we will estimate beta which means we will estimate this vector beta vector which has k entries over here beta 1 denotes the intercept term and the rest denotes the coefficient of predictors so that will be in the next lecture this was a short video because i wanted to introduce something new and if you are not comfortable with this analysis watch the video again you will be able to get it and if possible i will attach lecture notes from now on so if you want lecture notes also for these videos which i am making do comment in the comment box so i'll be making 
crisp lecture notes for all the videos which I am producing for past videos and future videos both. So do comment if you need lecture notes to accompany these video lectures. Before you go, do like this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new here and don't forget to hit the bell icon and also share with your friends if you found this to be useful. Bye bye.